Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and the kind invitation. For the commission, for the, for the commission I can only say uh, whether, whether it will be the Treaty of Lisbon or the Treaty of Nice as the legal base for the, for, the, for, the next, for the next commission, this commission will not be a lame duck institution. We will continue to work under full steam uh, until, until the very last day uh, in office, uh, and we are not um, restricted uh, in, uh, in our activities and not restricted in our power. Even if we have to prolong a little bit uh, our uh, time in office, that would not restrict our, our, our powers, so we, we, will be, we will be able to act. I personally say that it, it would be wise uh, to show a certain self-restraint here and not to produce major policy initiatives at the end of your term, as the Prodi Commission did, uh, and created a lot of problems for the, for the, for the present commission. For instance, the, the famous services directive, oh, yeah. which was, in my view, responsible for the crisis uh, in, which we, in which we are since then, uh, was, was done at the very end uh, of, uh, of, of the Prodi Commission and the Barroso Commission, was not, uh, how shall I say that, um, tough enough. <laughs> I was looking for <laughs> tough enough. It was not tough enough to withdraw it. Yeah, to, to withdraw it. Had, had we withdrawn that, there was no problem today because the Constitution would have been accepted. Now, okay. So, <coughs> in, in this political framework, there is one thing that worries me a little bit and uh, would like to mention that as well. Not, not two, two things. In, 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 the one is, everybody agrees that we need a much, much stronger uh, global governance in political terms and in economic terms. We have a new American administration, a lot of new dynamism, some fresh, some fresh ideas. Uh, I think we still are in honeymoon with, uh, uh, with President, President Obama, despite some first signs that it might be more difficult I think, than we had expected, but nevertheless, there is an opening on the American side to uh, concentrate more on multilateral uh, cooperation than the Bush administration did. Question, are we prepared, are we prepared to respond? Are we, if the Americans offer us global partnership, are we up to it? Can we, can, can we meet that? I have, have serious doubt whether in the present condition we will be able to speak with one voice whenever it is, whenever it is needed. And that, of course, at such a year of transition is not extremely helpful. Um, the, other, the other element is that, uh, that I believe uh, that Europe is making, uh, making a terrible mistake uh, with, or with, with or with the neighbors. Uh, the, our, our policy vis-a-vis -vis our neighbors uh, is uh, characterized uh, by strong rhetoric, there's no doubt. So we are promising everybody everything. Uh, we are promising the Mediterranean countries, the countries, the Mediterranean Union. Uh, we are promising our eastern neighbors, the eastern, the eastern partnership. Uh, we are promising the Western Balkan countries, the membership in the European Union. We couldn't even manage to conclude the negotiation with Croatia in the last five years. So it's, not to mention, not to mention Turkey. So uh, for me, it is absolute, absolutely clear uh, that uh, our weakest, our weakest points uh, are the uh, the international responsibilities in our home region here, where where we should be the champion, of course, and where we where we should take a leading role, uh, and worldwide, uh, where we should uh, act as a global <coughs> as a global player. Uh, on, uh, on equal footing uh, with the Americans and those who are emerging already as the global players of the future. This, and then I will conclude that this, in my view, is the big question. Seeing all the changes uh, in the world, what will be Europe's role? We will have a multipolar world, there is no doubt. And the, the only question is, the only question here is, will Europe be one of the poles? Will Europe be a global player, an independent global player, or will Europe be the subject of decisions?
taken, taken by others. If you're happy in Washington, if you're less happy uh, in, uh, in Beijing or in, uh, or in Delhi, that is, uh, that, is a, that is a situation. Now coming to the <coughs> economic, uh, economic situation and the fact that we have to deal with that under the political circumstances that I have, that I have described and I have not mentioned, of course, the national level and elections uh, coming in some important member states. Uh, and I will not speculate about elections here. Uh, <coughs> but what I, what I can see at the European level is that there is a much, much bigger understanding than in the past that Europe needs uh, to find a response to the crisis uh, on, a, uh, on a common basis, that, uh, that we need to have a common response, uh, that uh, if member states would try to find solutions uh, on their own, um, they are lost. So, so far, I think uh, we, uh, we, could, we could manage to uh, at least, at least organize coordinated European actions. The big problem is, and I know that it's surprising for many people, the European Union, which is the successor organization of the European Economic Community, so an institution that was organized as an economic community, does not have a common economic policy. We do not have that. And we will not get it with the Treaty of Lisbon either. So the Treaty of Lisbon will not change that. <coughs> economic policy is still something that needs the needs economy. We have a monetary union, yes, we do, <coughs> but we do not have a common fiscal policy, we do not have common budgetary policy, we do not have uh, a common, a common econom economic policy, as, uh, as even, even taxation, nothing, as I already said. So under these circumstances, uh, what we, uh, the, it, it really, it really uh, requires a lot of skills yeah, to bring our ducks always in a row. Is English? Can I say that? We yes. have the ducks in a row? Very much so. <laughs> Don't get them out of line, <laughs> otherwise you're in trouble. To make them bring the ducks. Uh, and um, this, is, this, is not, this is not always, not always very easy, but it happened. When, the, when, when, when we became aware that there was a real crisis in the financial, financial markets and the first uh, uh, emergency operation took place here in Ireland, the second in the United Kingdom, and then the chain reaction would follow. It was really, it was really visible. Uh, the, uh, the leaders, uh, the commission uh, took action, and uh, we, found, we found a coordinated approach. That's fine. What we need now is um, <coughs> to uh, analyze the situation, and if we do that, we will find that so far, all our actions did not manage to restore confidence in the banking sector. Still not working. Reasons are clear. It's risk avoidance. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the banks, the banks are sitting on the money. Uh, and because my view is they expect more to come. More, more, risk, more risk to come. And we will see that very soon. With the, Ameri with the deaths of the American private, private households, credit cards, cars, third wave of uh, subprime uh, mortgages. So uh, there's, still, there's still something to come. But of course, mixed, this, uh, this uh, risk avoidance, risk aversion, makes, of course, uh, things even, makes, makes things even worse because it affects the real economy badly. This is the most serious problem that we have in the real economy. Uh, it's a question of access to finance. Uh, it's, dif it's different in different member states and for different sectors. For instance, the SME sector in the majority of the member states is not really affected. So the, of course, the credits are, are a little bit more expensive, or in some cases even remarkably more expensive. You need, uh, you need more, uh, more securities, but um, normally, normally for, for SMEs it works. It does not work for the major, for the major companies uh, and uh, for, for credits in the range of above. 50, 50, 50, 50 million, especially if you have the roll over the old, the old debt. Extremely, extremely, ex extremely difficult. We have seen um, an economic uh, slowdown unprecedented in, uh, in scope and speed. I, you can believe me or not, but I have no reason uh, to tell you lies here. Um, 
I, I was more or less in daily contact with all the industrial sectors in the European Union last year. And until the summer last year, there was not, not a, the slightest signal of a crisis coming for the real economy. Everybody told me business as usual. All the books are full, fully, em fully employed, no problems. The first, the first thing that came, and that was not, that was not a surprise, the first thing that came during summer from the car industry. Right. The car industry is always, is always an early, an, 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 er an early indicator. Uh, and we took action immediately. I mean, some, some people complain that we, 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 are, we are very slow about this. No, 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 no. We, ha we have seen the first indicators that something went wrong in the car industry in September and already beginning of October. Uh, we had the first meeting with all the stakeholders in Brussels, uh, discussed what, what needs to be done to increase, to increase demand. And uh, so already, already in October, we took, we took action. Uh, in October, uh, I said already, we will need 40 billion. 40 billion for the, for the European automotive industry over the next three, four years uh, in order to fill the gap and allow them, and loans of course, 40, 40, uh, 40 billion in loans, in order to allow them to finance the investment in the new cars, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we require them to produce new cars, the green car of the future, that European legislation, and I defend that, I'm not against it. It, it is for the long-term sustainability of the industry absolutely necessary. But now the question is, how can they invest in the, in the, in the, in the, in the new technologies? And, the, and uh, the, how, can they, how, how can they build the new engines and the new cars if there is no access to credit? So that was the so I said already in October, we will need 40 billion. And then it started. Uh, and it started with the cancellation of orders. Mm. For the good example, the shipbuilders, I met the shipbuilders in November. They say our, our order books are full until the end of 2012, so there will be no problem for us because 2012 the crisis will be over. I meet them two weeks ago. No new ship is built in the European, will be built in the European Union this year, obviously. Not a single one. Uh, and uh, this was, of course, booming. <laughs> this was a uh, this was a booming industry. But the other sector which shows the, the, the scope of the crisis, uh, duty vehicles, not very much in the, uh, uh, not very much in the, the interest, the center, center of the interest of the public opinion. Uh, production is down from 100% to 2%. 2%. So you give you a figure. Normally we produce 40,000 heavy duty vehicles a month in the European Union. So you need orders on that uh, 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 range, 40,000, and normally we have them. In December we got 600 for the whole industry in the whole European Union, 600, plus several thousand cancellations. <coughs> so these are some, that's some, some, some snapshots uh, where we are. <coughs> this is a, a situation that has this politically and, and socially extremely, extremely uh, sensitive. It's sheer dynamite because the social consequences will be, visit, will be visible only later. So far, what are the companies doing? They get, get rid of temporary workers, they reduce shifts, but they still try to maintain uh, the, uh, the, qualified, the qualified staff. To still try to do that. But if the situation will not change very soon, we will see considerable cuts uh, of, uh, of, of production and we will see layoffs more or less every more or less everywhere. Huge layoffs. Car industry, to give you the example of the most exposed industry that we have, the car industry, we will see an accelerated structural change uh, and in my view, at least 400,000 shops uh, are at risk, at least 400,000, uh, in the production of the car. But that's, I, do mm. not, I do not analyze the aftermarket, which mm. is much, much bigger. So we have in car production in Europe more or less 2.2 uh, million uh, jobs, assembling and supply. Mm. Uh, and the aftermarket has 10 million people, 10 million. They, we are all the small 
dealers and mm. the trade, the traders, the pairers, and the service and all the kind of things. Like all the 300,000 companies. I cannot say. So the people tell me one third of all those companies uh, is, uh, is in the So you see the scope of it. Poli policy response. I think uh, we should not overestimate the um, effectiveness of uh, so-called uh, stimulus packages. Certainly helpful, uh, but uh, in order to create a real and very strong impact, uh, you need a stimulus package that is so powerful uh, that you cannot finance it. <laughs> so I do not, I do not see how we. How we how we can how we can do this, uh, and you would you you would have to do a lot on the demand side, yeah. So certainly, the taxation would be an, would would be an issue. So they improve the income situation of people. But the governments cannot do that. The budgetary situation does not allow it. So I'm I, I'm not against it, but I'm saying we should not overestimate it. Uh, we should instead of this. Uh, <coughs> Concentrate on, on, our, on our principles and make sure that the principles are respected. And that is where I see my role and the role of, of the European of the European Commission. <coughs> Sometimes it's more important what you do not do than what you do. Yeah, it's really true. It's true. I'm not kidding. Something in politi in political life, something more important what you are not doing. Mm -hmm. So to, to tell member states you should not. Yeah, you should not try to develop economic nationalism. Tell people buy Irish, buy French, buy German. But it's already happening. We should not allow them to build fortresses. We should not, we should not allow them uh, to try to develop sectoral initiatives and bail out uh, individual companies or uh, individual sectors. You, you can help sectors, but you need to respect the rules. So the basic rule is the functioning of the internal market uh, must, uh, must not be damaged. The internal market is the most important economic asset that we have. Yeah. And number two, the functioning of the monetary, monetary union uh, must not be jeopardized because it has the same importance for the function of all economy. But I think that Jean-Claude Boucher, when he was here in this mm -hmm. building later that day, will elaborate on this. So I can, mm -hmm. I must not. But it's important, important to see to see the two things together. The, the internal market uh, and, and and the monetary union. So we shall not, we shall, we shall not, we shall not allow excessive, excessive state interventionism. Uh, we shall, we shall not allow a protectionist, a protectionist race. Uh, already under the present, under the present uh, rules that we have for state aids, the situation is worrying because uh, there are member states which can make use you know, <coughs> of the framework conditions which we have, like Germany. Oh, of course, Germany, they, they still can pay. Yeah? And uh, if, we, if we allow now that a, a member state uh, can uh, spend 500,000 euro uh, uh, individually for a company without notifying it. Yeah, you can give 500,000 aid to a little company, bailing it out, without notification. Well, no, the Germans can do that in many cases. I have my doubt whether the Czechs or the Bulgarians or the, or the, or the Latvians uh, or, the, or the Irish can, uh, can, can, do that, can do that right now. So it will create more imbalances and more and more disparities. It's the same with uh, subsidies which are allowed for, for innovation, research, whatever it is. So bigger and richer member states can do it, smaller and poorer member states cannot. So it always, it always increases uh, the disparities which we have and runs contrary uh, to, the, to one of the main, main objectives of our policy uh, to uh, improve the convergence uh, of, uh, of, of the social and economic conditions in the European Union. So, Make sure, make sure that um, uh, the uh, policymakers understand uh, that the division of labor between policy and, uh, and, and business 
uh, is still there. And I stick to that and as a matter of principle. We are responsible for the framework conditions and we should create the best possible framework conditions for doing business in the European Union. But only the framework conditions. We are not responsible for management decisions. And yesterday, and this is my final remark, yesterday the Commission, when we discussed at the request of the European Council for its meeting next Sunday, the uh, future of the European automotive industry, I think the majority of people expected <coughs> the Commission to say, we will lead a restructuring plan, we will present a restructuring plan for the European automotive industry. And I said, no, we will not, we will not do that. We will not decide whether the factory in Salamanca is closed or whether the factory in Volosium is closed. This is a matter of the company to decide. And, we, and it's our, our responsibility is uh, to uh, force them to tell us in advance what they are doing and then uh, to develop the instruments in order to help uh, the people who are, uh, who are affected by this. So restruct restructuring of the economy in the, in the, old, in the old sense is not possible. Let me come to an end. Um, <coughs> I cannot tell you how long it will, how long it will take. Nobody, nobody knows. <coughs> there are indications that the uh, situation might be better already beginning of next year, but I must tell you that my, my trust in uh, the, uh, the prognosis business is very, very limited. <laughs> yeah. very li it's very limited uh, for very good reason, as you can understand. So, so I do not know. I think that everything depends on the uh, question uh, whether we can find a global response or not, and then I can close my circle. Uh, I'd say it's in, uh, it's in our interest uh, that uh, there is a, co a coordinated uh, global, global crisis response, uh, and the more united we are, uh, and the more we are able to speak with one voice, um, the uh, better our prospects uh, that um, European interests and European principles are respected. Thank you very much for this. Yeah. <coughs>